I'm a used car dealer and right now I don't want you to buy a car from me. This Rogue is what you need. You know what it'll do? It'll, it'll make toast, it'll cook you breakfast. You know what? It'll pump its own gas. And on the new car side of things, what are we seeing? Check it out, all around behind me. So right now is one of the most frustrating times to be a car dealer. His workstation is junky. You can you find it? anything here? Yes. <laughs> so I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt right now that you do not want to be a buyer of used vehicles. And I'm standing right here on the proof. If you can see behind me, Usually, I'm walking here on my car dealership. You can see tons of cars behind me with, uh, with my prices on them. And guess what? There's no cars right now. What happened? We sold almost everything. And we've sold all these cars in just the last two to three weeks. And the reason being is because tax refunds got here. And what every other used car dealer across the country has done is something similar to me. Probably not on the scale that we have, but they've moved more vehicles. And what's that going to cause them to do? That's going to cause them to have to reload their inventory. They're going to be short right now, especially on the cars that are $15,000 and under. They have to rush back to auction and they're going to pay higher prices. And what does that mean for you as a consumer? It means that prices are going to be elevated for the foreseeable future. It means that dealers are not going to want to negotiate right now because they just moved all of these cars they think they think that the good times are going to keep rolling like they do every single year we know that it's not because as soon as the money gets here from tax refunds it goes just like that but because they're in a situation right now where they're going to auction they have to load up again they're not going to want to take any less for their cars because right now they're paying elevated prices and they think it's going to be very hard for them to replace their vehicles so they're not going to want to give you a deal all right, so we're going to show you a uh, frustration that uh, Alex has to deal with all the time. Alex goes to the auctions, he buys a lot of these cars, but what ends up happening, especially when prices are elevated when they are right now, as they are right now, is that dealers try to figure out ways to get cars to be cheaper when they're going through the lane. And what they do is they unplug stuff, they unhook stuff, and Alex uh, found one right here. Just something, something simple, easy fix, whatever. They just unplug the hose, which can cause the check engine light to come on. It causes EVAP codes, things like that, uh, where you're getting bad airflow. Right there, it looks like bad airflow. Yep. Um, and uh, so it takes us time now to figure out where the problem's coming from um, because sometimes the scanner doesn't tell us exactly what the problem is. There can be 20 different problems, but now Alex has to spend time looking to see what's going on but it's good that uh, right there is an easy fix, uh, but it's a very, very shady uh, that what a lot of these dealers do is they, they just pull little hoses like that all the time yep. and uh, send them through auction. So Try to get a cheaper price. Yeah, cheaper price. But, but we know how to fix it, so didn't get us. Done. Actually, it might have it gave us a cheaper price. Did you pull the hose? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't do that. And on the new car side of things, what are we seeing? Check it out, all around behind me. This is a Toyota dealership. This is a dealership that recently hasn't had a ton of inventory, but now they have a lot full of inventory. And we're seeing it even on the most desirable brands, Toyotas, that uh, they're stocked up with inventory. Day supply is going up. Dealerships are getting cars now. And this is going to continue for the foreseeable future because even dealerships like Toyota, they're having a harder time selling their vehicles right now. And production has caught up on the manufacturing side. So Toyota, these other manufacturers, they're going to continue to send inventory to these dealerships even when some of them can't take it anymore. Allocations will stop rolling in because dealers are going to turn them in. And at that point, dealers will get pinched and they'll have to sell vehicles, even Toyota. Even what you're seeing behind me, they're going to have to lower prices. It's not going to happen very quickly. It's going to take some time for these dealer lots to build back up again, even the higher demand brands. And you're just going to have to wait them out. You're going to have to wait for them to get a lot of inventory, start turning down allocations, and then at that point, they can start lowering their prices. But it's going to take a very long time. You have to be patient. You have to wait if you want a good deal. So Automotive News just put out an article showing that Nissan was incentivizing its dealers to move more product. And what Nissan is doing right now is they're giving their dealers an extra thousand dollars for every 2023 Rogue that they can sell right now to meet their target bonus. 
And uh, what this is showing is that uh, manufacturers are now getting involved with these dealers saying, okay, you're not able to sell these vehicles right now. We're going to step in and we have to help. And the way that they're helping is not necessarily by giving customers money, taking money off the deal, but they're giving money to dealers kind of like a, a spiff, a commission thing to uh, show that, uh, okay, you need to get these 2023s um, off of your lot. And if you do that, then we can help you. And the reason why they have to do this is because not too far in the future, we got 2024s that are rolling out. And we know specifically for the Rogues, they are not moving. So Nissan is stepping up and saying, okay, what what, what are we gonna do? How, how are we gonna get these dealers to move, move their cars? And what this causes dealers to do is to be more negotiable with their consumers because they know if they knock off and that extra thousand dollars to move that car, well, they got it coming right in from Nissan. So they can move a little bit more, but I can tell you this is not going to be enough. And I can go ahead and tell you too that let's still just hold off because this is just the first wave of incentives that we're seeing coming through from these manufacturers. And as the climate gets worse for these car dealers, gets worse for these uh, these manufacturers, what are they going to do? They're going to continue to add more incentives. They're going to add them onto the uh, consumer side too. You're going to start to see rebates come off. And we're going to see more and more and more of this coming through the system because the environment's not going to get any better anytime soon. And these manufacturers, they know, they know right now that they have to step up. They have to do something. They're going to start small, but then as the pressure uh continues to get applied to these dealers and as allocations start to get turned down as we're seeing right now the manufacturers are going to add more and more and more incentives so you can wait them out and you will get a better deal later on as these dealers get pinched more and i bet if you walk into a nissan dealership today you know what? That Rogue's going to be the best vehicle that they got. That salesperson's going to be like, oh, you you need the Rogue. Don't look at anything else. This Rogue, this Rogue is what you need. You know what it'll do? It'll, it'll make toast. It'll cook you breakfast. You know what? It'll pump its own gas. But we just, we need to get you in this Rogue. What, what can we do to get you in this Rogue? And you're going to see that from a lot of salespeople. A lot of these uh, franchise managers, they're going to want to pump these Rogues out because they know they're going to get paid a little extra when they uh, when they sell that Rogue instead of uh, instead of that Altima, that Sentra, that Versa, whatever else they got that's maybe a little bit cheaper. They don't want to sell you that anymore. They want to sell you that Rogue. So I get a lot of comments of you guys saying that, well, you're going to these dealerships and you're not seeing prices being marked down even though their inventory is stacked up. So when you go into a dealership and look at the MSRP and you see it, it's uh, $32,899 for this uh, for this RAV4. And uh, you really, you're not going to see uh, the prices marked down on the stickers out here, especially, especially at a Toyota dealership where they can still command MSRP. But even when you go to Dodge, you go to Ford, these dealerships that are having a big time moving inventory and the days of supply are just going up and up and up and up. And you see these F-150s, you see these, these Dodge Rams, you see a lot of these GM trucks sitting on lots and not selling. These dealerships, they're they're kind of handcuffed by the manufacturers. And I've, I've spoken to some GMs lately, and even if a lot of these GMs want to market their cars way below MSRP, and some of them want to sell below invoice, they actually have rules that they have to follow from the manufacturer dictating how much they can actually display their cars for the, the as far as discounts and stuff like that. So with a lot of these manufacturers, if you go onto their lots, you're not going to see these deep discounts that you could actually get if you walk inside and talk to the salespeople, talk to the sales managers, push their buttons a little bit to try to get some of this money off of these vehicles. And uh, a reason why a lot of you aren't seeing it is because you're, you're not trying. And if you're just going out and looking at stickers, you're not going to see it because they can't display these cars for less than certain amounts as per their manufacturer. All right, so you've all been screaming for it. I read the comments. Alex reads the comments. You want more of Alex. You want less of me. More of Alex? Right here. Less of me. So I wanted to come in here and I wanted to yell at Alex because... His workstation is junky. You Can you find anything here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing, I, I, if I'm here and Alex is not here and they need some help up front fixing something, everything that you have to fix on a car always needs a 10 millimeter socket. I can never find a freaking 10 millimeter socket. Where is it at? 
Okay, you got one right there, but just put it there. It's, uh, I go in. Actually, we're going to show you. Watch this. There's probably nothing in there. Watch this. Yeah, okay, here's our socket drawer. There you go. Guess what? The sockets that I always need, they're always right here. Here's another 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. And there, let's, let's pull up another drawer. Let's see. Okay, here's another one that should have a 10 millimeter socket in it. Oh. Um, you know what? I'm proven wrong right here. This better not be a 10 millimeter. You know what? I'm just going to take this to my office. <laughs> yeah. He just lost that 10 millimeter socket because I can't ever find one, so it's going in here with me. There you go. Staying right there. So, if you haven't noticed, I do give Alex a really hard time, but me and him, we're cousins. We grew up together. We're like brothers, and uh, I can promise you that uh, he will give me a hard time just as much, if not more, than what I give him. So, I know it seems harsh when this is this is how me and him communicate. This is how this is our love language. Say crap to each other. That's that's what that's what we do. So right now is one of the most frustrating times to be a car dealer in just about any given year because what happens is we sell i mean you see this we sell all of these cars right now and then we want to go to auction we want to buy cars so we can sell more cars to our customers and you just you just can't do it because stuff that we were buying for fifteen hundred two thousand dollars right now today when i go to the auction it's going to cost us almost double that. Like this, these fifteen hundred dollars cars, they're going to go for twenty five to three thousand dollars because these dealers get crazy during this time. And if you're not prepared for it, it's even more frustrating. We can kind of sit back and have an easier time right now because we prepared for it. We we killed it. We made probably twenty five percent of all the money that we're going to make all year round in about ten days. And that's why we can go on this vacation of, of car buying and have a little bit of a relaxing time because we know we already made our money. We know we worked hard before it got here and uh, now we've, uh, we've reaped all the benefits and we don't have to scratch and dig and claw and panic. A lot of these dealers are panicking right now to go and try to find these cars. But it's still, even for us, even though we hit it really hard, it's still very frustrating to go to these auctions and see what these dealers are paying for these cars. We can go and see these cars that we regularly buy, these, these Camrys that have 175,000 miles, like a 2002 to 2006, whatever, where we usually buy them for 2,000 to 2,500 bucks. And dealers are paying four thousand dollars for them and we know that they're going to try to make twenty five hundred dollars at least on these cars so we're like who is this customer that they're selling these cars to they're going to pay sixty five hundred dollars at least for a 2002 camry the hundred seventy five thousand miles who's who is that customer so a lot of them are buy here pay here dealers where they hold their own notes they can sell these cars to these customers for sixty five hundred dollars and as long as the customer can have that down payment from their tax refunds and they can make the monthly payment, at least they think they can, uh, then these dealers will pay whatever it costs, which is they're paying all of the costs right now for these cars. And small dealers like me who don't hold my own notes, who don't finance, who pay cash, we just know that we're just not going to be able to buy right now. And there's a lot of dealers out there that do business just like I do, and they're, they're feeling the same frustration that I am where they empty their lot, and they're like, you know what, I don't know what to do now because I can't buy any cars, I can't find any, and the ones that are at auction, they're way too much. So I'm not buying them. So, oh, well, this is, uh, this is what we're uh, going to do. And next month, we're probably not going to make any money. And the reason why we're not going to make any money is because we're not going to have any cars. But that's normal. That's normal. We're used to it. We're not panicking because this is just what happens. This is what the car market looks like. And if prices of used and new vehicles weren't bad enough, your insurance rates are absolutely insane right now. Listen to the stat. In the last 10 years, insurance rates have gone up by over 85%. So they have almost doubled in the last 10 years. The national average of what someone pays a year for insurance right now is $2,150. And two of the cheapest vehicles to insure right now are a Honda CRV and a Subaru Outback. And even those vehicles right now average $1,700 a year for your insurance payment. And for you EV buyers out there, we'll take the, the Tesla Model Y and the average insurance that you're going to pay on that is $3,100. That's absolutely insane. So we're seeing across the market that insurance rates are crazy, crazy. The cost to be able to afford a vehicle, not even just purchase it, but to maintain this vehicle, to keep it insured, is going through the roof and making it more and more difficult for just the common person to own a vehicle. 
So on the used car side, what, is, what does that mean for you as a buyer? How long does this madness last and how long should you wait to buy a vehicle? Well, I can tell you really how tax time generally works out and uh, this year is going to look more like a traditional year, a traditional tax season than it has in the past few years where uh, we're not seeing a lot of money being pumped into the system. Interest rates are way higher than they were two to three years ago so we're going to get back to seasonality in the car market and what things look like so what does that mean that means that okay over the course of the next probably month month and a half dealers are going to continue to keep their prices elevated because they sold a few cars they're going to have to replace them and they're going to feel like they can still get very high prices for these vehicles but we know that's not going to be the case because the money is going to run out it's going to run out very quickly so then what happens these dealers they load up their lots again they pay way too much for these cars at auction and uh, then they have to stop going to auction and that's when we see wholesale prices start to go down that takes about a month month and a half um, after the first tax checks get here and uh, then you have basically this this holding time this waiting period for uh, for these dealers where they're going to sit on their inventory they're gonna realize okay yeah we pay too much for this we're gonna have to start lowering prices to start moving metal again and it doesn't happen overnight just like in the housing market you're going to have to have uh, the sellers lower their prices a little bit then wait off the market see if anybody's going to buy they realize okay no one's going to buy for this price then they lower their prices again another 10 percent whatever and then it takes uh, a couple months for these dealers to start to get pinched and uh, what we like to do here at my dealership is once the first craze of tax time hits we will pretty much pull back on buying cars almost all together um, and uh, that's why you see that we don't have a lot of cars. We got a few that are we're still uh, being worked on right now, and we'll filter these in as soon as we get them ready. But for the next probably two to three weeks, we're we're done buying, and we're not going to be able to buy anymore because prices are way, way, way too expensive. And I'm just I'm not going to pay it. We we hit it big during tax time. We're done. So we go through this time, and then as the dealers start to get pinched, then they'll stop showing up at auctions. That's when wholesale prices crash and they crash every single year after tax time, this is exactly what happens. It won't happen in the retail market because you don't get um, as quick as a movement on the retail side as wholesale uh, side because dealers are reluctant to lower their prices. They're very slow to lower their prices, but they're, uh, they're very quick to stop buying cars. And when they stop buying cars, that's when I go back in and prices crash on the wholesale level. I'm able to buy at auctions again. Uh, but you'll get this time period where, um, okay, as the dealers are slower, demand's lower, uh, not any money in the system, the beginning of summer is when these dealers will start to panic um, on the retail side and they'll have to start slashing their prices to actually move uh, some of these vehicles. So what I traditionally say throughout a regular market, which is what I think we're getting back to, is that uh, beginning of summer, mid-summer is when you're going to start being able to go and uh, start negotiating on cars again. Before that time, you won't be able to so as the summer goes along we're still going to have this downtrend in the market and I think prices are going to continue to go lower from there so the longer you can wait the better the better price you're going to get but if you need to buy and you need to buy uh, in the next uh, four to six months or whatever you can start looking again uh, beginning of summer middle of summer that's when you'll start seeing prices roll down again and continue this downtrend but uh, but right now I don't want you to be a buyer of, of any vehicles at all because prices are going down. And right now, right now is about the highest that they're going to be all year round. But it's going to be short-lived. A lot of these dealers, they're going to get pitched. They're going to get hurt. And you just got to wait them out. So that's what I want you to do. And on top of all of this, it has become more and more expensive to keep your car running. Repair costs, maintenance costs, labor costs, when you go get your car fixed, have also gone through the roof. And this is due to people just not buying cars. Whether they listen to these other YouTube channels that are telling people, look, wait out these dealers, wait out these manufacturers. People are keeping their cars longer. And that means that these, uh, these me mechanic shops, they're backed up. They're getting way more business right now, meaning that they can charge more. And on top of that, 
all these parts, these parts have to come from somewhere. They're not making more parts than what they were before we were seeing all this craziness in the car market. So you have a bigger demand on a lot of these parts that are needed to fix your vehicles. So all that's just more and more cost, even just owning the current car that you have. Not even thinking about buying a new one, but just, just driving the car that you have today. Insurance, repair costs, everything else that you have to, that you have to pay for that's associated with your car it's just more and more expensive every single day they're going to be able to uh, uh, where am i going here but i'm probably not going to be able to buy anything no 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 let's try this again oh i forgot what am i supposed to do uh